Hi friends, welcome to Diagnox. This is Dr. Farakat. Today, in this video, I will discuss the topic Perotip Nodule, the role of a dental surgeon. The greatest confusion which all the dental surgeons have is who should see a patient with perotip swelling. Of course, we dental surgeons who have a thorough knowledge in anatomy, physiology of salivary glands can definitely diagnose the patients with salivary gland issue and refer them accordingly. Many times patients visit the dental surgeon with swelling mass in the parotid gland. The signs and symptoms of parotid gland infection may mimic space infection caused by other dental issues and it's very important that we differentiate them correctly in order to arrive at a correct diagnosis. The three most common complaints of a patient with salivary gland disease are dry mouth or xerostomia, swelling in the gland or mass in the gland. In this video, I will discuss about a patient who complained of a mass in the right parotid gland, its diagnosis, investigations and management. There are also other conditions which cause swelling of the parotid gland like bacterial and viral siladenitis metabolic conditions which affect the gland, autoimmune conditions, malignant tumors which we will discuss in another video. Parotid glands is composed primarily of serous cells. Parotid glands, the largest of salivary glands are positioned on the lateral aspect of face overlying the posterior surface of mandible, anterior inferiorly to the auricle. They have got a superficial and deep lobe based on the course of facial nerve as it transverses the gland. Most benign tumors are located within the superficial lobe of the rotid gland. So the management usually is superficial parotidectomy. Bilateral parotid masses are usually lymph adenopathy, Warten's tumor, lymphoepithelial cyst, Jogren syndrome and malignant tumors like acinic cell carcinoma. Multiple painless mass in a single parotid gland could be Warten's tumor, lymph node, benign and malignant tumors. This is an young male patient who visited us with a complaint of a mass below the ear which he noticed since one month. On clinical examination, you could rarely see any mass but on close inspection, a small mass is noticed below the ear lobe causing a slight lifting of ear lobe. On palpation, a nodule of size around 1 cm was present along the superficial aspect of right parotid. It was movable and it was non-tender. Based on the history and clinical findings, we thought it could be a non-specific lymph adenitis from any dental foci of infection and we went ahead with OPG to rule out dental infections. We also did routine blood investigations. We did MAN2 because the patient complained of weight loss. He had multiple mandibular lymph nodes enlarged and one of his family member had a history of pulmonary tuberculosis. But everything turned out to be negative. That's when we thought we could do an ultrasound. Even though the mass was very small, 
we didn't want to leave the patient like that so we went ahead with usg ultrasonography is a useful technique or useful imaging modality in assessment of superficial mass of parotid and submandibular gland it's inexpensive it's widely available safe with no radiation due to its advantage ultrasound has become the method of choice for initial evaluation of salivary glands it can differentiate malignant from benign lesion in 90% of the cases or with 90% accuracy it can differentiate solid from cystic lesion and it can also differentiate glandular from extra glandular lesions with 98% accuracy this is an ultrasound scan of this particular patient which revealed a mass which is related to the superficial lobe of right parotid and USG here clearly showed as that it's not a lymph node but it's a different mass now we have found out that the patient has a mass in the superficial lobe of right parotid so we have to identify the nature of mass USG to some extent has shown that it's a benign mass but still what mass it is we have to identify so we went ahead with a procedure called as fine needle aspiration cytology where cells or smears from the nodule is taken for histopathologic evaluation and fnac clearly showed that it was a case of pleomorphic adenoma it had moderately cellular smears epithelial cells arranged in asinar pattern background had myxoid materials and fnac showed that there is no malignant cells so now we have a patient with a salivary nodule with usg clearly showing that it is related to the superficial lobe of parotid fnac has shown that it's a benign tumor possibly pleomorphic adenoma the next step would be a surgical procedure to remove the salivary mass before we go for the surgery we should be thorough with the outline of lesion that's where we have to go for ct or mri mri provides superior soft tissue resolution over ct and mri has become the imaging modality of choice for pre operative evaluation of salivary gland tumor because of its excellent ability to differentiate soft tissue and the availability of multiplanar imaging mri produces high degree of accuracy in assessing perineural and intracranial spread of malignancies mri is further preferred for salivary glands because patients are not exposed to radiation no iv contrast media are routinely involved less prone to artifacts from dental restorations than ct so we went ahead with mri which further confirmed the lesion this patient was referred to a general surgeon where a superficial parotidectomy was done the facial nerve was preserved and the tumor was removed and on further evaluation of the excised specimen it turned out to be a pleomorphic adenoma patient was discharged after 2 days with analgesics and antibiotics patient is on follow up for more than 5 years and he is still doing good with no recurrence so there are many important things that can be learned from 
this topic the most important thing is take time to listen to the patient's chief complaint so many a time uh, when a patient complains of a nodule or a small uh, swelling in the parotid or a submandibular region we would just tell them that it could be just a lymph node and we just come after 6 months 6 months 6 months and the patient would only come after some 6 or 7 years with a very large mass making everything complicated so whenever patient comes with a complaint we should take it seriously and do at least the basic investigations ultrasound is a very effective and important tool in salivary gland image it serves as a initial diagnostic tool and it guides us what to be done after this and early diagnosis is very very important to avoid complications and if this patient would have been left like this now he would have come after many years with a huge mass and the surgery would be complicated the facial nerve would be compromised he could have end up with facial nerve paralysis and much more complications so early diagnosis is very very important meet you all again with another interesting video thank you if you like this video you can subscribe our youtube channel diagnosis